Well, it was uh, with McDavid and Dreisaitl today. Just what goes into that uh, decision? What do you hope uh, Drake can help with you guys? Well, we had to make a few changes. Um, seven nothing. But um, seven nothing is probably better than one nothing. It forced us to look at some things a little bit differently. And and um, Patty's size, Leon's size has been a, a very useful tool throughout the year. Uh, but we haven't got to the point where we can actually use it in their end that much. So a little more pace for him. Uh, Coach, can you talk about uh, how you uh, view Connor going into this game uh, and uh, what you have to do for him and what he has to do for himself and that sort of thing? I see Connor being our captain and uh, one of the top two or three players in the world. Uh, rises to the occasion often. He's playing in his first playoff series, uh, playing against the same team night in and night out, going up against... Uh, uh, one of the top defensive uh, pairs and, and individuals in Mark Edward Vlasic. And when he's not on the ice, he faces some pretty good veteran checkers up front. And uh, I view him having 19 other players around him that have to help. Todd, Vlasic, you had Vlasic. What makes Vlasic as good as he is? Very competitive and, and uh, uh, very well positioned and stamina. He can go three minutes on a shift and still be playing at the same level of, uh, of play in the, in the last half of, of that shift as he is in the first. Todd, with Kajula this season, you, you stuck with him through a lot of the year and tried to help him develop some consistency. When he brings <coughs> that high-end game, what quality, how would you describe his, his high-end game when he brings it? I would describe him as tenacious. If I, if I had to pick a word, He's, he, you know, he can be effective on both sides of the puck. Uh, create turnovers in the offensive zone, create them in the defensive zone. Um, uh, fairly high hockey IQ. So he's, uh, he's got a lot of the tools that, that are required to play at this time of the year. When you're talking about all the qualities of the defensemen that are uh, checking on Connor, do you try to get away from that matchup tonight if you can? Well, we, <laughs> it's easier said than done. Uh, as soon as the pucks drop, they win a faceoff, out comes the other pair. So if we could win a few more faceoffs, that would give us the opportunity. But, um, you know, they're, they're a well-structured team. They're confident enough to even have uh, their fourth line in Tierney on the ice against that group. So uh, they feel they can check uh, with any of their four lines. Uh, so if they don't get the back end match, they're certainly comfortable in the front. So um, it's called playoff hockey. You don't get away from everything. And um, that's why down the stretch, a lot of times Connor played against, or Connor's line played against Kessler and some of those others just to prepare them for, uh, for this type of uh, two weeks. Todd, you had two really good games in two and three solid defensively. You've still kind of been waiting for your offense, which was one of your best parts all season. Watching film, what have you noticed collectively amongst your top two lines specifically that you feel they can do a better job to create and ultimately finish? Well, most of our, not most, some of our top offensive guys are tired because they're killing penalties all night. I'll leave it at that. Todd, all year long, you guys seem to be a, a pretty good bounce-back team. Like, you haven't put a lot of back-to-back -back together. Back at the start of the year, you, you had that loss against Buffalo. You guys sort of made that move and moved to practice. It seemed like you drew a bit of a line in the sand there. Do you think that had something to do with that trait that developed in your team? Uh, well, you're taking us back to the Buffalo, and, and we didn't play well that night, but the, the shuffling of the practices was, was primarily due to, to Cam's baby being born or babies, I guess, multiple. Uh, we shuffled that around. But the response after the Buffalo game uh, to detail, to taking the level of play up, to being uh, responsible for your actions on the ice, both, both positive and negative, were, was one that we needed. And then we, we kept our foot on the gas pedal all year. So um, we, I expect our guys to come back and respond. Absolutely. Todd. Leon get, uh, gets a reprieve, he gets a fine instead of a suspension. He admits that it was a stupid play, that it doesn't represent him as a player. What do you think he learns from this? Uh, well, just that, it was a stupid play and it and, uh, doesn't represent him as a player. You know what, he could probably be up for the Lady Bing the way he played this year and the amount of uh, points he produced and lack of penalties that he took. So, um, you know, I don't think it's a... I don't think you can paint him with that brush. He made a mistake. He's paying for it. Uh, we move on. Todd, uh, San Jose very good at the body pick or the stick pick in the offensive zone. 
uh, Matt Benning talked about how you kind of obviously want to be prepared more for it. What else do you feel your group can do, and other than maybe have the, the officials call a few of those? But how do you counter that? Because San Jose's done that very well for long. Yeah, they have, um, and it's a set of tools that's in their toolbox. We have that ability to play like that too, and they're getting the better of us, or they did that game um, in that area. But they played on their toes. They had more energy. They got to lose pucks quicker, uh, beat us with numbers. Um, you know, I can review that whole game, but I'm wasting my time. Um, when, we, when we're playing well, we play quite evenly uh, with them in those areas. So 7 nothing, uh, you know, take you through the whole game if you want, but you don't want to stay here that long. Okay.